Hello everyone. Today in this lesson, uh, I'm going to talk about the Laplace transform and mathematical modeling of a control system. We learned in the previous lessons uh, for modeling a linear control system in mathematical term, uh, we need to find the uh, transfer function of that control system. And we saw that in transfer function of a linear control system, we need to uh, find the Laplace transformed of output and Laplace transformed of input. Actually, the ratio uh, of Laplace transformed of input to Laplace transformed of input is our transfer function. For this reason, we need to learn about the Laplace transform. Let's start. Um, what is the Laplace transform? <coughs> Suppose that our function f of t is in time domain. Okay? Our function is in time domain. Sometimes we need to convert a function in time domain into the S or complex domain. The Laplace transform help us to convert a functions in time domain to the complex domain. Okay? For this reason, we suppose that f of t is a function of time and s is a complex variable. Okay? Capital F of s is defined as a Laplace transform of f of t. Okay? And we can use this formula actually for calculating and finding the Laplace transform of a function. We said that capital F of S is equal to integral of F of T times exponential function e to the power of minus S times T dt. Using this integral, we can find the Laplace transform of uh, a function in time domain. Okay, if we have the Laplace transform of function and want to know the f of t, how can we do that? This is called the inverse Laplace transform. Actually, for finding a function which is in a complex domain into the time domain, we can use inverse Laplace transform uh, again using this formula. In this case, we say that f of t is equal to 1 by 2 pj, this integral of f of s, capital F of s, the, com the Laplace transform of function, times again to the exponential function ds. Here, I would like to show you some important function, um, actually Laplace transform of some important function which we need in this course and we will use them to finding the um, fi transfer function of, uh, actually Laplace transform of this function and also the inverse Laplace transform of this function. The first one is unit impulse. I will talk about that this function, uh, but now I want to show you that the, imp the transfer function, the Laplace transform of impulse function is equal to 1. And the Laplace transform of unit step function is 1 by s. What about the t? We suppose that our f of t is equal to t. The Laplace transform of t is equal to 1 by s to power 2. 
and all of these functions you can see in table here and here the Laplace transform of this function. For example, uh, suppose that our f of t is equal to exponential function e to the power of minus a t. We can say that the Laplace transform of exponential function is equal to 1 by s plus a. Please notice to the sign of the a in f of t and in the Laplace of f of t. Actually, if we have minus a in the power of exponential, we will have plus a in the denominator of Laplace transform. Sine, ome sine of omega t. The Laplace transform of this function is equal to w divided by s to the power 2 plus w to the power 2. And cosine omega t is equal to s divided by s to the power 2 plus w to the power 2. And again this function which is used in this course in the automatic control systems and using this table we can find the Laplace transform of function and inverse Laplace transform of function. Okay, let's talk about some properties of Laplace transform. We can say that if we multiply a constant value to the f of t, the function in time domain, we can say that we can multiply the same constant value to the Laplace transform of this function. Actually, we can say that A times capital F of S. Another property is that if we can add two different linear function in time domain, Again, we can add these two functions in S domain, actually, as you see here. We can take Laplace transform from each of these functions and again add or subtract these two functions with together. The derivative of function in time domain we can say that if we take the Laplace transform from the derivative of a function in time domain, we can write that s times capital F of s minus f of 0. This is the initial condition actually. And for the second derivative of f of t, we can write the Laplace transform of this function like that. In the case of integral of f of t, we can say that capital F of s by s plus 1 by s integral of f of t in t is equal to 0. Okay? Now, if we multiply the f of t into the exponential function in time domain, we can say that we will have a delay in the Laplace transform of that function. And also, if we have delay in time domain, f of t minus alpha times uh, t minus alpha, we can multiply the exponential function into the Laplace transform of f of t, as you see here, like that. Again, if we multiply the t, actually this is the ramp function, to the f of t, we will, we can 
uh, take derivative from the Laplace transform of f of t and so on and other properties as you see here uh, can be used in uh, modeling the linear control system. To another um, important theorem uh, we will have in the case of uh, properties of Laplace transform. The first one is initial value theorem. This theorem states that if we want to find the value of f at zero plus, we can say that limit of f of t when t approach to zero is equal to limit of s times capital F of s the Laplace transform of this function when s approach to the infinity okay and the final value theorem states that if we want to calculate the value of f in time domain, in the infinity time, we can take the limit s times f of s when s approach to the zero. Okay? These two theorems are one of the most theorems in the case of Laplace transform. Let's give an example actually some example about the uh, Laplace transform. I want to show you how can we uh, find the Laplace transform of a function which is in the time domain. The first one is f of t is like that 6 times e to the power of minus 5t plus e to the power of 3 times t plus 5 times t to the power of 3 minus 9. Suppose that our f of t can be written like that. How can we take the Laplace transform of this function? We can say that capital F of s is equal to now we need to find the trans Laplace transform of exponential function. We said that if we have trans exponential function, the Laplace transform of this function can be found from this formula 1 divided by s minus minus 5 or s plus 5. And also we saw in the properties of Laplace transform that if we have a constant value multiplying to our function, again we can multiply the same constant value in the Laplace transform of that function. For this reason, we can multiply the 6 into this function. Okay? This is the Laplace transform of this term. For the next term, again, similarly, we can say that this function is exponential function. So we can write 1 divided by s minus 3. Why minus 3? Because the power of exponential is positive. Okay. Again, for the term 5 t to the power to the power of 3, we can say that 5 times 3 factorial divided by s to the power of 3 plus 1. Like that. And for a constant value, we saw that the Laplace transform of a constant value is equal to constant value times 
1 by s. Easily, we could find the Laplace transform of this function, as you see here. As an another example, suppose that our function is like that. g of t is equal to 4 cosine of 4 times t minus 9 times sine of 4 of t plus 2 times cosine of 10 of t. What can we say about the Laplace transform of this function? Again, using the definition of Laplace transform, we can say that we have a cosine function. We know that the Laplace transform of cosine function can be written like that s divided by s to the power of 2 plus 4 to the power of t, 2. And also we have to multiply the constant value 4 into this term. Again, for the second term, we can say that 9 times 4 divided by s to the power of 2 plus 4 to the power of 2. These 4 comes from here. And for the third term, we will have 2 times s divided by s to the power of 2 plus 10 power 2. And this is the result of actually Laplace transform for uh, function g of t. Okay, now suppose that we have transfer function in Laplace uh, form. Actually, this f of s is a function in Laplace tra transform, in s complex domain. Okay? Now we want to find f of t. We want to find this, this function in time domain. How can we do that? First of all, we have to expand this function into its partial fractions, like that. Okay? You know about the expansion of this function into the partial fraction. Now we need to calculate these coefficients a1 and a2. If we could find these coefficients, we can find the uh, trans inverse Laplace transform of this function. How can we calculate these coefficients? We say that the residue of this term in s to minus 1 is the value of a of 1 and the residue of this term in s is equal to minus 2 is the value of this coefficient. With substituting the s equal to minus 1 into this term, actually if we want to calculate the a1, we have to multiply s plus 1 into this function like that and substitute the s equal to minus, five, minus 1 into this term and calculate the a1. Again, for calculating the a t, a2, we have to multiply s plus 2 into this term and find the residue of this term in s 
equal to minus 2. So easily we can find these two coefficients with substituting the 2 and the minus 1 into these partial fractions of f of s we can see that we have 2 divided by s plus 1 so this term is Laplace transform of exponential function in time domain so easily we can write that 2 times e of minus t actually this term the Laplace transform of this term is this function again for this term similarly we can say that minus e to the power of minus 2 times t is the inverse Laplace transform of this term as you see we could find the uh, f of t in time domain using inverse Laplace transform okay in this section I want to talk about the mathematical modeling of uh, control system as an example let's talk about the mathematical modeling of electrical system in electrical and electronics engineering we have two most important laws which governing the electrical circuits these two laws are called Kirchhoff's currents and Kirchhoff's voltage laws using these two laws we can solve most of the electrical circuits Kirchhoff's current law states that the algebraic sum of all currents entering and leaving a node is equal to zero and Kirchhoff's voltage law states that at any given instant the algebraic sum of the voltage around any loop in an electrical circuit is zero okay using these two concepts we can find the transfer function of an electrical circuit as an example suppose that we have RLC circuit as you see here this is uh, an RLC circuit we want to find the transfer function of this system actually this circuit is a kind of uh, linear system okay our input is E I and our output is E O okay with applying KVL Kirchhoff's voltage law into this loop we can write this equation we say that the voltage of this inductor is L times di to d dt plus the voltage of resistance is R times I, I is the current of this branch and the voltage of capacitor is 1 by C times integral of current the, the current of this branch is equal to the input voltage EI as you see here again we can see that the voltage of capacitor which is parallel with the output voltage is equal with together because these two voltages are parallel 
So we can say that output voltage is equal to the voltage of capacitor. 1 by C times integral of I dt. Okay? Now we have two equation. Actually this is a differential equation. We taking Laplace transform we can find that L times S I of S plus R times capital I of S plus 1 by C times 1 by S times I of S is equal to capital E I of S. This is the Laplace transform of these differential equa equations. I would like to mention that we suppose that our initial conditions are zero. Again, for this equation, what can we say? Similarly, we can say that the Laplace transform of this equation is equal to 1 by C times 1 by S. Capital I of S is equal to capital E O of S. Okay. What did we say about the transfer function? We said that the ratio of transformed Laplace transformed of output to the Laplace transformed of input is our transfer function. Okay. Let's find this ratio. We can say that the transfer function of this system is equal to 1 divided by LCS2 plus RCS plus 1. Now, easily we could find the transfer function of, of uh, an electrical system. <coughs> okay. As a second and last example in this topic, uh, I would like to talk about a mechanical system. Consider the mass spring friction system. This mass is attached to the spring and damper and these are attached to the wall. Okay? In the mechanical engineering, we have some laws that are so important for solving uh, the mechanical problems. What, uh, one of the most important law in mechanical system is Newton's second law. Okay? With applying the actually the Newton second law we can write the motion equation for this system. As you see here, we can say that F is equal to M times A. As you see here, these are our forces which are applied to this mass. And this is the motion equation of this mechanical system. So we can say that F of T minus B times derivative of Y of T minus K of Y of T is equal to M times the second derivative of Y of T. Again, we can see that this is a differential equation we taking the Laplace transform, again, we can find the ratio of output of the system into the input of the system in Laplace transform. So, we can find the transfer function of this mechanical system like that. Okay, I think it's enough for today. Thank you for watching us. See you.